Hey, it's CrossFitTracking.com here with a, what I feel like is a big announcement from Garmin and in introducing a new sleep assessment on the Garmin watch, the Phoenix 6 specifically. It's not yet come to any of the other devices, but it's a beta download that you can load into the Phoenix 6 line of series uh, by going into directly into Garmin's website to download the files and manually importing them into the watch itself but it's gonna change how Garmin evaluates sleep tracking, and it's gonna do a couple of neat things. So that's the Garmin Phoenix 6. I'm actually gonna compare it to Polar's sleep evaluation currently, just using the Grid X, but obviously Polar has their nightly recharge as well as their sleep analytics on all their primary watches right now. But again, so what is happening is Garmin is changing how they're evaluating sleep. And what they're doing is instead of using their own algorithms, their own developed um, insights into what they think is happening when you sleep, they're gonna use FirstBeat. Now, FirstBeat is a physio analytical company which already provides Garmin with a lot of the workout analytics and the load analytics and the heart rate variability analytics that come on the watches as we know them today. So what Garmin's gonna do is they're gonna employ FirstBeat's sleep analytics. And what that does is twofold. Uh, number one, it's going to use a little bit more analytical of a company that purely focuses on physiological impact and effects and heart rate tracking and heart rate variability tracking and all those details to be able to calculate or assess how well you slept. And two, what it's going to do is it's going to be able to allow all the pool of Garmin users to flow through First Beat. So First Beat will hopefully get even better and more accurate with sleep tracking. So I'm going to and just share this overview of what the main differences are. Then we'll look at it on the watch in an actual sleep night evaluation and alongside Polar and how they evaluate sleep. And then I'm gonna give you a, a just an overview of how to download that because I felt a little bit scared in downloading a beta and manually transferring files, but it went fine. But I wanna give you kind of an overview at the end of this video. So if you like this, please give it a thumbs up and I'm trying to build my subscriber base. So subscribe if you have interest in hearing more about CrossFit tracking. Now, why is this important to CrossFit tracking? Because one of the main things that we want to do is evaluate our recovery. Uh, Garmin already does an excellent job in one level um, in having their body battery, which is related to stress. So they calculate the heart rate variability at any time throughout the day. That calculates into what an estimate of your stress level and how much stress you're under throughout a day affects how your body is being worn down. Conversely, how well you slept at night and how that tracks in heart rate variability, you know, re-energizes your body battery for facing the next day. And we'll see that. I'll show those two sort of side by side. But one of the biggest things, one of the biggest changes here is, first off, it's going to be on the watch. So you're going to see the sleep analytics and overview of the night's sleep on the watch, which has never previously been. Used to be that you would get the calculations, it would flow through to the Garmin server and come back and give you an overview of your night's sleep. And they would go through the basic stages of deep sleep, REM sleep, light sleep, and then disturbances or awake time. So you're gonna have the same four primary components, but they're gonna be found on the watch so that you can see your night's summary at any time on the watch, which is great. A lot of the other carriers do that, and I've always wanted it to be available on the watch, not just on the app. The second thing it's gonna do that's different is we're gonna get a sleep score. So Polar's been doing that for a while since they announced nightly recharge and updated some of their sleep calculations last year with the introduction of the Ignite and then bringing that to the Garmin, or to the Polar Vantage M and V, and then now on the Grit X. But what Garmin is now going to be able to do through first speed is give you a sleep score. So you're going to have two different basic combinations. You have your body battery regeneration based on heart rate variability through your night of sleep and then throughout the day. And it's going to show you like you did you replenish your battery and then you're going to have a score for your sleep, which is somewhat very much in line with the nightly recharge that we see on Polar now. Right now, Polar does an autonomic nervous system evaluation, which is based on a lot of those heart rate variability coupled with respiration. So hopefully Garmin will add in the respiration mix to the analysis. Um, but, and then they have the sleep score and those two scores give you an evaluation for how much you recharged overnight. So now Garmin has body battery, which shows you just a purely regeneration of your overall internal, internal resources or an estimate of it, and then the sleep score. Um, so number one, we're going to have visibility of all the details on the watch. Number two, we're going to have a sleep score that gives you a gauge for how you slept relative to um, stages of sleep, time in bed, and all those types of things. 
And then number three, it just gives you little pockets of advice. I don't think the advice is super helpful, but it's there either way as another. But what this also means is that it's a big step, in my opinion, towards Garmin improving their sleep and wellness and recovery metrics, which is a big part of CrossFit training, wanting to see how the workouts have been wearing you down, how much load you're under, as well as how you're recovering in a night's sleep, which a lot of people have found useful um, on, on other devices like Whoop. Um, so let's look at it hands-on now. And, you know, I think that as, as time develops, it's going to get hopefully more and more accurate as first beat has all this data to analyze, to fail to figure out, you know, even more accurate algorithms. And then as Garmin continues to allow them to develop how they tie in what this means or how to give you relevant information back. This is a big, this is what I feel like is a big change or a very big improvement. So let's see it on the watch and then I'll come back after and tell you what, how to download it and sort of how to go about that from my layman's point of view. I'm not an expert. So, okay. So looking at the watches, just to be able to see the specific sleep comparison differences, but specifically on the Garmin with the new widget. So it's just going to be found in your regular widget. When you first do the download, you actually have to go into the widget file. So you go up to your widgets and then down into edit, click the right top button into edit, go all the way down to the bottom. Um, and there's an ad and then you'll find the sleep widget. So here we're just going to go into sleep widget. It looks just like that. I actually had a terrible night of sleep and this was interesting to see as it compares to the polar. But you go into it and you see just the overall summary of the hours and time, the score, the quality, and a simple summary. You can see a little highlighted line there, but it's not as valuable. Here's that pictorial representation that we see on our app. Uh, obviously, terrible night of sleep. Um, the duration, you get your details, deep, light, REM, and awake time. Overall duration, you can see there's colors around the outside, but that doesn't actually help as much. And then, obviously, this is the summary. You got no sleep or I got way too little sleep. So that's the summary of what you see here. But it's just fantastic, in my opinion, not because of the picture, but because you can see your stats. Obviously, anybody that uses a Garmin Phoenix 6 is all about the stats. Um, and obviously, the stats make a big difference in evaluating uh, your training for CrossFit. So if we go into compare to the polar experience, we can see that this also said that I was compromised. So if you see the two side by side, you can see that I was compromised on this side. And if you go into the specific page, it'll show you that it was compromised based on a couple of things. So it says my my autonomic nervous system recharge was negative 4.2, but it gave me a sleep score of 74. That's on four hours of sleep. Here, Garmin, obviously, in their new analytics, gave me a score of 47. So out of the gate, I feel like, yes, for sure, this is adding value because you see the score of 47. Here, I don't know why they would have gone through it or why it would have given me that big of a score, but it says I got a usual night of sleep on four hours, highly unlikely. Um, it's at a, you know, four hours and 28 minutes. It got all the details right. Obviously though, it just said because I was fully asleep, my continuity was better, five out of five, because I fell asleep for four hours and boy, surprisingly, I didn't wake up. Um, no real interruptions. That was longer than the long-term average, or shorter than the long-term average. Sleep cycles three, I should have gotten super dinged for that. And then it says, well, my deep and my REM sleep as a percentage as it compares to the base, it says, well, you got a higher percentage than normal of deep sleep. But looking at the bigger picture, well, that doesn't matter. I got four hours of sleep. So it's not helpful to be able to see what my sleep was really like if it's giving me a score of 74 when it should have when I should have failed the test just based on the basic premise that I only got four hours of sleep. Here, you can see those same basic stats. Um, I guess we can look at just the specific stats throughout here where it shows the amount of deep sleep and REM sleep. So you can see that it doesn't show you the actual details for time and light sleep. It just shows you percentages here. You have to go into the app to see the time amounts for each category. Here you see the time amounts for each category right on the watch. I don't really care as much about percentages because I want to see how much deep sleep I got or how much REM sleep because there's different restorative features that happen in those parts of the sleep. But here you see the deep sleep time, REM time. So the value on the watch information is better now on the Garmin. 
than what it is on the polar. And polar has been regarded as having some of the best sleep or at least looking like they have some of the best sleep analytics. Secondly, the other thing we can see is on the ANS charge. I do think that they got it right. So it's much below usual. My autonomic nervous system charge is much below usual. We will compare this to Garmin's body battery. So on my body battery, if you look at that, it basically virtually did not regenerate. 100% is what you should typically come to in the end of a night's sleep. You should you know, move all the way up to 100%, but clearly I did not because, you know, well, that's just the part of the day, but I just went from 15 to like 31 since midnight. So I've just peaked at 31. So it gave me a super low regeneration score for how much the sleep helped me to recover my overall heart strain, I guess you could say. So if you go back into this and we go back into the ANS charge, you can see that it gave me a negative score, yes, of four point, negative 4.2. And it does base it on some additional calculations, but the same basic thing is how is my heart rate, beat to beat intervals and heart rate variability calculate into that score. Now my breathing rate average, it's just comparing it to past breathing rate averages. So this doesn't help to know exactly how much uh, regeneration occurred. It's just comparing an average of last night versus a 30 day or 28 day moving average. Same thing with heart rate variability, 28 day moving average. So again, on a night when I got only four hours of sleep, we can see that this metric might not have been as accurate because it's just sort of saying, well, in that four hour window, was your heart very at rest? Well, that's good or not, but it's still not looking at the fact that I got like horrifically low amount of sleep. Here on the body battery, it just said, well, your heart didn't have much time to recover because body battery is based on heart rate variability and you need to have low heart rate variability in order to regenerate your heart, regenerate your overall internal resources. So this, because I got a low amount of sleep, said, hey, Jocko, you didn't actually grow your your resources very much as you slept. So again, looking at these two sort of side by side, I feel like the Garmin is really coming out ahead, in my opinion, when I look at the specifics of what information they're and how they're gauging the information. So again, going back here, sorry, get my hand out of the way, looking at sleep and the new calculation versus sleep on the Polar, you know, you can see that it's um, a little bit more accurate or a little bit more worthwhile on the Garmin systems. It's super exciting. I'm going to give you a little overview of how I went about adding the beta because, again, it was the first time I did that. But thanks so much. I'm going to, you know, add thoughts to this as time goes on and maybe as Garmin continues to update it. Again, this is unfortunately only for the Phoenix 6 series of watches, whether you have a standard or a pro model on the S standard or X versions of the Phoenix 6 series. But um, stay tuned for more developments, I think, as Garmin continues to evolve this. Let's look at how you can actually install the beta next. Okay, so how to download. So this is the first time I've done a beta download. And what you have to do is you have to connect your watch to a laptop or a computer. I use Windows, so I can only speak to that. You're going to go on Garmin's website, and there's a list of four watches. It's like the 6S and the 6 um, Standard and the 6X. And then there's a pro link for each of those. When you go into their link, it's gonna be a zip file, which has a bunch of files in it. You're gonna transfer the zip file to your desktop or to wherever. And then within the, you know, you're gonna transfer the contents of the zip file. That's what I did to desktop. It's just a singular folder. And within the folder, there's another number of subfolders. So then you're gonna connect your watch to your computer. You don't actually use Garmin Express through the USB connection. You're gonna go into the My Computer part of your computer where it's listed as My Computer and you can see your hard drive and things like that. And it should automatically appear that there's this Phoenix 6 in the list of sort of side drives. Um, you're gonna go into the list of side drives and you actually have to, I think, go two folders down. So there's like music and like some of the photos, just ancillary extras. And you go into the Garmin, you keep going into like the main watch folder within that. And then you'll have a folder that you get to that has a bunch of components to it. Garmin has an explanation on their beta, on their update, all their update pages. At the bottom of the update, it tells you how to employ the beta aspects. And so I would follow that. But in simple terms, 
You connect the watch to the computer, you find it on my computer, and you dive into the folders to the primary Garmin folder. And then you open the zip file and you begin to take those following steps. And this three is basically four files, I think. It's just simple steps. So you're going to take the update file with the beta number, which I think this is 994, and you're going to drag it from the file you saved to your desktop into the main Garmin folder. And please reread Garmin's instructions at the bottom of their update log. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. And then you're going to go into the Garmin Sensor SW folder. And you're going to go, so Sensor SW folder from the watch itself. And you go back to that content of files you downloaded from the zip file from the, you know, the Garmin website. And you're going to go into each of the little sub files. I think there's like five. So one is this like, you know, um, folder for going back. It, it, there's something I think it says like um, backlog or you're going back to an older, you know, um, firmware operating. But otherwise, you're going to go into the sensors. You're going to each of the little subfolders. You're going to go in there. There's going to be one file and you're going to drag it into that Garmin Sensor SW folder. So Garmin and then Sensor SW folder. And you just drag them in. And once you've dragged in each of the little separate folders with their individual files within the zip file that you saved, you disconnect the watch and it automatically starts updating. One thing that I noticed, and I didn't do anything with it, was there's a folder for Wi-Fi update to version like 2.6 or something. And on Garmin's website, they didn't have instructions for what to do with the little update file in that folder. I'm guessing you could probably drag that update file into that same sensor SW file and it'll update the Wi-Fi. But because there wasn't specific instructions, I didn't do it. And then I was like, oh, great. Well, can I do have to restart the whole process? I just left it out and the watch is working fine. But I just wanted to give you at least my take because I was a little nervous in doing it. But you just take follow the steps on the bottom of the page for the Garmin update log and just follow them methodically and you'll be fine. But I wanted to give you kind of the premise for where you start so that you have an idea. Again, thanks so much for watching crossfittracking.com. Let me know if you have any issues just because I'm curious the process or the experience um, in the comments below. Thanks so much.